appreciate it, Mr. Prime Minister. He is going crazy. Oh, my God. Blah, blah, blah. I'm deeply sorry. It's a small change with the hope it'll have a big impact. The Prime Minister altering the national anthem to make us one and free. The lyric change aimed at better reflecting our nation's history. The real change needs to be within the Australian Constitution. We're going to walk down to the Capitol because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. We will never give up. We will never concede. It doesn't happen. You don't concede when there's theft involved. The 46th President of the United States. Just a few days ago, violence sought to shake the Capitol's very foundation. We come together as one nation, under God, indivisible, to carry out the peaceful transfer of power. The global death toll from COVID has now eclipsed the 2 million mark. The United States tops the list with almost 400,000 lives claimed by the virus. And the revelations of this week alone have sent shockwaves not just through Parliament House but indeed throughout the whole country as more details emerge about the alleged rape of former Liberal staffer Brittany Higgins. It just did not happen. Attorney General Christian Porter has been revealed as the Cabinet Minister at the centre of an historical rape allegation. I can say categorically that what has been put in various forms in allegations simply did not happen. We are all here today, not because we want to be here, but because we have to be here. Thousands marching across the country, demanding action to end violence against women, and the sexism and misogyny that enables it. I was raped inside Parliament House by a colleague and for so long it felt like the people around me only cared because of where it happened and what it might mean for them. One of the world's biggest container ships blocking the Suez Canal, one of the world's most vital trade routes. Ever Given has given a, us a tidal wave of glorious memes, like the situation being explained by Austin Powers. Sydney is facing a once in 50 year flood emergency tonight. Josh Edge and his bride to be, Sarah Soares, watched their home go by from opposite sides of the swollen river. It didn't seem real, and then once I seen it, I, yeah, I just broke down. The world has reached another grim milestone in the history of the coronavirus pandemic. COVID-19 deaths have passed at 3 million mark. With over 400,000 daily infections reported on both Thursday and Friday, cases in India keep breaking new, grim records. The Human Rights Commission has raised serious concerns about the government's India flight ban, saying tough new restrictions could breach international law. And it's the first time in history that Australia has blocked its own citizens from returning home. Uh, the ban is racist, it's possibly illegal, uh, it's not supported by the medical advice and it's got to go. Gaza's punishment continues. More airstrikes at dawn. Israel says this is not over. It doesn't just want the rockets to stop, it wants its opponent crippled. In Sheikh Jarrah, there continues to be anger and tension. <laughs> Attempts to evict Palestinians from their homes in this area earlier this month helped start the escalation to the conflict. 200 people have died in the last week, nearly all of them Palestinian. Israel's Prime Minister is refusing to back down after 10 of his citizens were killed by Hamas rocket attacks. But international outrage is building over the civilian cost. A number of pro-Palestinian rallies are being held across Australia today. Demonstrations are underway in Adelaide and Hobart following similar events in Sydney and in Melbourne. For many of us, it's the stuff of nightmares. For thousands of families in rural East Australia, it's everyday life, a life they share with a plague of mice. With fears it could wipe more than a billion dollars from the value of winter crops. Farmers have been forced to burn supplies of hay and grain. Please help us to get her out of detention and home to Bilola. This family have been living on a knife's edge for three and a half years. They still cannot go home to Biloela. Thanks everybody for their love and good wish. 
the flame. Naomi Osaka, the tennis star, was chosen as the person to carry the flame and light the final cauldron. Uh, there is, though, anxiety amongst most Japanese uh, about the state of the virus situation in Japan, the capital. Kobe standing up with a 5-0 oh, rolling oh, in the cameraman! The cameraman. Oh, yeah. 400 meter. He is going crazy. <laughs> my, oh my goodness. <laughs> it is unequivocal that human activities are responsible for climate change. That's the finding of a new study by the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Uh, what you are looking at right now is Taliban fighters inside the presidential palace. Taliban is now effectively in control, including in the capital, Kabul. An American military transport plane on the runway this morning, mobbed by Afghans trying to flee their country. Scenes like this quickly spread on social media across Afghanistan and the world. A symbol of the U.S.'s disastrous withdrawal from the country after 20 years of war. The ADF is negotiating a landing spot at Kabul airport to extract citizens and visa holders. We will only be resettling people through our official humanitarian program. Our policy has not changed. The war in Afghanistan is now over. Today we join our nations in a next generation partnership. And so friends, AUKUS is born. The first major initiative of AUKUS will be to deliver a nuclear-powered submarine fleet for Australia. They're teaming up to mount a challenge to China in the Indo-Pacific. Their pact puts paid to a French deal to supply Australia with diesel-powered submarines. A diplomatic slap over the submarine spat. France withdraws its diplomats to protest the new Australia, US and UK alliance. I thank uh, that fellow down under. Thank you very much, pal. Appreciate it, Mr. Prime Minister. Bricks and debris strewn across one of Melbourne's most popular shopping strips. Oh my God. I thought it was a practical joke. Who has earthquakes in, in, in Windsor or Paran? I was advised late yesterday afternoon the Independent Commission Against Corruption will today uh, release a public statement in which it will state it is investigating allegations made about me concerning matters relating to the former member for Wagga Wagga. You just throw money at Wagga. I'll, I'll throw money at Wagga, don't you worry about that. Therefore it pains me to announce that I have no option but to resign from the Office of Premier. Sydney's cafes, gyms and restaurants have welcomed fully vaccinated customers. What's been described as Freedom Day. Uh, it has been a difficult 100 days. Famous Chapel Street buzzing, drivers honking their horns to mark the end of the world's longest lockdown. Cheers heard across the city. Live music, let's go. Welcome back. Let's go. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to COP. Welcome to Glasgow. Of the COP26 World Leaders Summit, which some have called the last chance to control global warming. This is no longer a climate conference. This is now a Global North Greenwash Festival. May I just say to all uh, delegates, um, I apologise for the way this process has unfolded um, and uh, I'm deeply sorry. It is one of the most extraordinary stories of the year, possibly even longer, Lisa. Four-year-old Cleo Smith this morning has been found alive and well. WA police have announced they found the little girl in a locked house. Victoria's human rights watchdog has raised concerns over Premier Daniel Andrews' controversial pandemic management bill. A sea of frustrated Victorians stretching for blocks down Burke Street, returning for the largest rally yet against the Premier's proposed pandemic laws. What concerns me? Well, personal freedom, personal movement, medical apartheid. Peaceful protest descended into the realm of the unhinged, a hanging noose, an effigy of the Premier. It's time for governments to step back and for Australians to take their lives back. The federal government has announced new quarantine rules for Australians who've been in South Africa and several other countries over concerns about the new Omicron coronavirus variant. The government has hit pause on the next stage of our international border reopening. There are five confirmed cases of the new strain in Australia. Of all the countries in the world, Australia is as well prepared as anybody. After a two-week pause, the nation's borders are finally set to reopen for visa holders on Wednesday in what's set to be a big boost to Aussie businesses. Soaring cases 
cases threaten to jeopardise Christmas celebrations for a second year running as thousands of close contacts are put into isolation.